Hello, my friends. So good to be with you today. And we're beginning our video series for BLAST. Welcome to BLAST, building lives around solid truth. This is what we're doing. And so today we're gonna to be talking about the theme of hope, the gift of hope. My friends, when we think of hope, we can think of it as a human phenomenon, and we can also think of it as a gift from God. If we were to begin speaking of hope as a sort of human phenomenon, as a topic, we could say that hope is a feeling of expectation. Hope is a desire for a certain thing to happen. To a large degree, we've got a lot of power in making things happen in our lives. We're given free will. We can affect change in our lives. We can, we can do a lot. If we hope for something to be different, we can do things to make things different. I have a reasonable hope of being able to get a new job if I want one. I'm not suggesting I want one, so nobody run with that, please. If I want to change my body, I can change my diet and exercise habits. If I want to change my soul, I can change my spiritual habits and pray more. I can meditate. I can do Lectio Divina and focus on scripture really forming me. There are so many things I can do to change things. And yet if we were to limit hope to merely a human phenomenon where we can desire for things to be different and then just do things that are different, we would be severely curtailing what hope actually is intended to manifest as in its highest manner. And that would be as a theological virtue, theological hope. This is where God gets involved. When we have theological hope, what we have is sound assurance in the God outcome, which shall come to pass. If we seek to align our wills with God, the will of God shall come to pass in our lives. And so hope, in a theological sense, is really an affirmation of certitude. Here's what we hope in. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Christ is our hope. He is our hope. And strengthen the idea of theological hope as an affirmation of certainty. Perhaps we can draw on the idea of what the season of Advent even means. It's hope in the nativity of Christ. It's preparation for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And when we hope in the nativity of Christ as we enter into Advent, we know that it's already assured. For we have already contextually observed the incarnation of Christ ever since the Annunciation in March. We're affirming that which already is. In a theological sense, the God outcome affirms that which shall come to pass. My experience is that hope in this sense has always brought me out on the other side of an endeavor with things looking significantly different than I had initially envisioned. And yet that's formation. That's being formed in the hope of Christ. That's an acknowledgement that the incompleteness of our own ideas can only take us so far before the grace of God needs to intervene and affirm our hope by surpassing our expectations. This often can be very challenging. Advent is a time of joyful anticipation. It's a time of hope. And yet, like all hopeful times, even though in God we can surely count on God's outcome coming to pass through the hope, even when we're going through the hopefulness and the discernment of what it is that we're considering, we're still taking a leap of faith. We're still trusting God with the unknown. We're still trusting God to take us from one place to another. And that could be very trying. That's a type of asceticism. That's a type of mortification of the will. 
we typically see Lent as this time of challenge where we sort of mortify ourselves and prepare ourselves through ascetic disciplines. St. Benedict, the author of Benedict's Rule and the de facto founder of Western monasticism, at least the most significant figure in it, saw the Christian life, the spiritual life, as one prolonged Lent. But then later on in the Middle Ages with the advent of the Cistercians and St. Bernard, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, a doctor of the church, began to refer to um, the Christian life, the spiritual life, as a type of advent. There is an ascesis, there is an asceticism, there is a discipline involved in waiting, a discipline involved in in-betweenness. And yet, it is the joyful anticipation of new life that sustains us. New life epitomized by a baby. New life epitomized by God coming into the world as such and allowing himself to be wrapped in swaddling clothes and placed in a manger. A manger, my friends, is a feeding trough for animals. This is an early Eucharistic, a very visceral Eucharistic image for us to consider. I think overall the big takeaway here for hope in the theological sense in which we are presenting it is that hope really is assuredness in the God outcome. We can hope in Christ's nativity because it's been in process since March, since the Annunciation. And we celebrate it every year without fail. Christ comes every year without fail. Christ affirms that which already is. At this point, it seems pertinent to provide a reading here from Romans. This is one of Paul's letters. And this represents a sort of mature faith. Let's listen to Romans 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. When Paul wrote this letter, it was intended to be circulated as a sort of encyclical. Um, it was meant to eventually arrive in Rome. Romans is Paul's summarization, his mature summa regarding his faith in Christ and his ancestors. This is his mature faith statement that he intends to be circulated throughout the world. Out of all of this, perhaps we can take away that hope consoles us because when we have theological hope, we're not so much looking forward to something as we are remembering something and understanding that it's coming to pass. Not only do we remember God's goodness and power, we also accept his assurance that perseverance in faith inevitably leads to the fullness of God's outcome for our lives. My friends, our hope in this is guaranteed because nothing can prevent this from happening. Blessed Advent to everyone. Thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you real soon. Amen.